MSC Virtuosa is one of the largest ships in the world, costing almost a billion dollars to build. It has one of the most shimmering, glitzy interiors you can find at sea, but holds 6,000 passengers. Is it possible to enjoy a cruise that has this many people aboard? In this video, we're going to take you into the heart of the ship, right into the thick of things, to find out what it's like on a ship with 6,000 passengers. How does it feel? With the latest 360-degree camera technology, you can now imagine you're aboard with us. You'll really feel immersed as if you were there, right from the top of the ship to the bottom, and almost out to sea. Some of the recent reviews online have been very poor. Are they right, or are they wrong? Let's find out. This is the full review of the MSC Virtuosa. Welcome back to the Ritzy Travel Guide. My name is Bill, and it's great to have you along. Now, in the last edition, we released a video that examined what the MSC line as a whole has to offer. This time, we focus completely on one ship in their fleet, the Virtuosa. It's big, it's bold, and it's brassy, but it also has a reputation for being one of the most rowdy ships in the fleet. Some have berated it for not being a cruise at all, but just a nightclub at sea. Others have said that this pulsating atmosphere aboard is exactly what they love about it. We wanted to know if this latest trends of cruise lines releasing mega ships is leading to a better or worse cruise experience. Sailing for 14 nights to the Mediterranean on the Virtuosa was our way of finding out. And what's more, you'll be able to find out what it's like on the ship at the worst possible time, bang in the middle of the summer holiday season. With 6,000 passengers aboard, the ship was bursting at the seams. Right, let's get cracking, and we'll start with a quick ship's tour so you can get a feel for it. We'll also talk about the Yacht Club, their premium part of the ship. We'll go through all the aspects the Virtuosa we think are great, and then the things that might possibly drive you crazy. Look, more and more and more and more and more deck chairs all grabbed. It's only seven o'clock in the morning. Bet you they're not going to be here till nine or ten. If that, maybe ten or eleven. And we'll go through ten aspects that we feel will really help you get the most out of sailing on the Virtuosa. Let's take a look at our embarkation day. And despite what we heard online, for us, it went relatively smoothly. And from arrival at the terminal to getting on board was about 90 minutes. Let me know in the comments if your check-in was not like this. The MSC Virtuosa is a huge ship. It's big, it's bold and brash, with a touch of elegance thrown in for good measure. Like most megaships, it almost feels like a small town at sea. With shops and bars facing inwards, it's a huge departure from traditional cruise ships of years gone by in terms of design and layout. The heart of the ship is the gallery Virtuosa, which runs almost the entire length of the ship on deck six and seven. It has a huge Las Vegas style arch screen on the ceiling, which changes at will. Oh, what's the ceiling showing tonight in the atrium? We're underwater. We found it to be quite striking. The main atrium then suddenly changes its vibe altogether and tries to go modern elegant with violins and pianos. What's the MSC Virtuoso famous for? It's Swarovski sparkling staircase in the central atrium. Do we feel a bit like we're at Ratner's jewellery shop in 1985? Almost need a pair of sunglasses. The ceiling. It's all sparkly and mirrory. It's all sparkling, isn't it? It's sort of like Sparkle Central. More job to do on embarkation. Activate your card so that you can pay for items on board. Activation point. Activate those cruise cards. First day aboard, don't forget to go to the Atelier bar because you have to lock in any of your speciality dining. Go to one of these counters here and choose which day and what hour because some of these speciality dining outlets do get booked up. If you don't do it on the first afternoon, you run the risk of not getting what you want. All the muster station personnel, zap your card, 
say you've listened very intently on your cabin TV to all the instructions. Okay, now this is quite a clever use of the screen on the MSC Virtuosa during muster station hours. It puts a deck plan telling you where your muster station is. Well done, actually, MSC. That's quite innovative. Now, in just a moment, we're going to look at the bars and the dining available on the ship. Let's take a stroll through the casino. The Red Gem Casino. We've got playing cards. What sort of facilities do they have here? Well, obviously a sparkly floor. They allow smoking in here. I think they must allow smoking in here. There's a circular bar right in the middle. Here we are. How many TV screens can you watch at once? In a moment, we're going to be coming on to the Yacht Club, the MSC's version of a ship within a ship, a premium lounge, if you like. That's coming up shortly. First, let's look at dining. Before we got on, we'd read review after review online, pretty much slamming the main dining rooms. We completely disagree. So let's take a few moments just looking at what food is available on the Virtuosa. Let's start with the buffet first. It has a huge variety of foods that constantly changes, and I applaud what they have on offer. How about that for a roast? Is this a roast lamb? I accept roast, roast beef. beef? Yeah. That is huge. Very good looking roast beef. The main course up here is stuffed pork loin with apricot. You would often find really premium items on offer. Items that you wouldn't expect, such as smoked meats, great coal cuts, outstanding gourmet cheese selection. And we have a sort of anti-pasto spread here. Look at that cheese that is oozing out. It's gooey. It's almost dripping off the plate. For those who like gooey cheese, such as me, that is very tempting. Other cheese selections, some salamis, some smoked fish. Lots of Indian choices and selections. And the hours of opening was very generous. Okay, so far so good. Buffet serving great food. But here comes the big fat negative. With 6,000 passengers on board, at times the buffet gets almost unusable. Okay, 12.30pm, lunchtime in the Marketplace Buffet. How is it looking? Fairly close to capacity. There wouldn't be a lot more tables available. So when 6,000 people descend on the buffet at once, you get a logjam. Because it's busy, it's noisy. So, I know that all cruise ships have a noisy buffet, but this one seems louder than others than I remember. Okay, an hour later, 10 o'clock, substantially more busy. One of the most important points to make is that a lot of time people have no choice but to come here because of the hours of the main dining room. The main dining room is open for breakfast for just one and a half hours for breakfast. The main dining room is open from 7.30 until 9. A lot of people want breakfast late at 9, can't. If you arrive at 9 or 9.01, you will not be allowed entry. And the main dining room, absolute crime is only open for an hour at lunchtime between 12 and 1. Now a lot of people don't want to eat lunch at 12. It's too early if you've got up a little bit later or even a leisurely start. That means you have for lunch the choice of the buffet, the buffet, the buffet or the buffet. So that is why it's absolutely packed. A couple of the speciality restaurants are open for lunch. Butcher's Cut I believe is open. I believe uh, Ola Mexican is open, but those are obviously additional cost, and it's not inconsequential. The additional cost for those is quite high. Okay, I have an interesting observation. What do you hear in the buffet section here? Well, noise, obviously. However, I do have a suggestion for you. After being on board several days and trying to think, how can you come to the buffet and not have your ears blasted? Well, there does seem to be this interesting difference. You come to this side here and wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. It's getting quieter and quieter. Now, I know it's not a library. I know it's not a dead cat. So, number one, you can get tables and chairs. Number two, you won't have your ears blasted off. 
Number three, exactly the same buffet is here. Because we're at the aft of the ship and the buffets do repeat. So, top tip, come to the aft of the ship. But wait, but wait, but wait, I have a hot tip for you. If you need to get away from the busy, noisy Lao buffet, there is a section out at the aft right here. It's almost unknown, or maybe people just don't want to walk that far. It is, after all, just a few extra paces further away. But look at that. It's a little sanctuary. It's nice and quiet. What a way to spend a Mediterranean breakfast or lunch out here on the aft deck. And almost nobody does it. For those who want an even more in-depth coverage of the buffet, we have a video coming out showing you everything from breakfast, noon, dinner and midnight so you can imagine exactly what's on offer. Remember to be subscribed to our channel so you know when that video comes out. On to the main dining rooms and here we have very positive news. We can report that they were excellent. We feature them quite fully in our other video on the MSC experience which you can watch after this. Here's our take on the main dining rooms. Formal night. Dressing up glad rags on. A good evening to show them in action is on the formal or gala night where people dress up a little. It will also give you a heads up on the dress codes for the MSC. We had three such nights on our 40 night cruise. All the gala night photographs taking place. Hello, how are you? Evening! This is the first gala evening where a lot of people dressed up. I would say as the crews progress, this did get lesser until by the end, not many people were dressing up on gala nights at all. Something that I do applaud MSC and particularly on Virtuosa 4 is the spacing on the tables in the main dining room. They are extremely far apart, which is good because other cruise ships you are on top of each other. Sometimes you can be inches apart. On MSC, they are nicely spaced apart, giving you privacy if you want privacy. Oh, we have a birthday tonight. For those who want to know what's on the menu in the main dining rooms, let's quickly run through a small sample of what we ate. Here we go, a cruise ship standard beef wellington. And this pretty little parcel is escargot en croute in puff pastry. I'm not sure I've seen snails in pastry before. How's that one going? This is fantastic lasagna. Is it? So beef. It's really good so flavour. Yummy. Very, very good. And here we have baked brie with a berry compote. Just open this up to see if the brie oozes out. Yes, look at that. Nicely baked and oozy inside. I could, I could order everything on the main course today. Mediterranean evening in the main dining room is extremely good. Very, very good paella this. Full of flavour. Got the texture right. Lovely prawns, muscle on top. Beautifully presented. It's a good meal. Fantastic. Well done, chefs, tonight. It's an extremely good meal. Okay, now I have a little observation for you. We were just down in the main dining room having our dinner and we thought we'd just pop up to the buffet to see what was up here and what was different. And I've got a very interesting observation for you. The main course up here is stuffed pork loin with apricot. Does that sound familiar? That was in the main dining room earlier. First night's main course, we have pork with an apricot sauce and roast potatoes. Looks very nice, very nice. And what's the other thing we noticed? It's seared tuna steak. Also on the main course in the main dining room. In other words, it's got exactly the same selections. Whilst we're on the subject of the main dining rooms, I absolutely have to show you breakfast that was on offer there. It was excellent. And this is the Minuetu restaurant, which has been designated as breakfast restaurant for the duration of our cruise. Morning. Always nice to have a slow, relaxed breakfast when time permits, overlooking the ocean. Don't you think? Oh, righty, what should we have for breakfast? I tell you what, 
The Eggs Benedict is calling me. Poached eggs on a smoked ham and a toasted English muffin served with hollandaise sauce. I think roll mops, pickled herrings in the morning for me is possibly a no. That is a very nice looking plate of savouries for breakfast. You. Thank you. Thank you. Incoming orange juice. Here we are, sea day. Ordered breakfast overlooking the aft deck. Tried to be healthy. A light breakfast. A light breakfast. How did we do on the healthy steaks? Eggs, Florentine, smoked salmon. I went for an omelette and salmon and somehow two hash browns ended up on the plate. Supposed to be health healthy, somehow didn't happen. Fruit salad and yogurt, there we are. That is suddenly a healthy bre breakfast selection. Day one. And you know what? Almost no one went to the main dining room for breakfast. Almost everyone went to the buffet, which is a shame because the breakfast on offer is superb. The maitre d' is extremely efficient and very pleasant. Now, a note about the Virtuoso which you have to be aware of, and that's that there are only two restaurants on board that are free included in the fair price. They are the buffet and the main dining rooms. Now, this really puts MSC behind most of the other cruise lines which are offering far more dining outlets included in your ticket price. And what's the result? Because people can't necessarily afford to go to the speciality dining, they go to the buffet and the main dining rooms, and the buffet just gets jammed. Now, if the other cruise lines can open up more of the other dining rooms, more of the speciality restaurants for the ticket price, why can't MSC? By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please do give it a thumbs up as it lets us know we're on the right track and you'd like to see more of this type of material. Now let's move on to the Yacht Club. For those not familiar, this is the section of the ship that MSC closes off for premium passengers who have paid considerably more. Think of it as like a business class section. A ship within a ship, if you like. It's controlled by key pass and you can't get in if you're not supposed to be there. Now it does cost considerably more than the main section, often three to four times more. For that, you get to your own special dining room, separate lounge area, swimming pool, and deck areas. Plus your cabins are also in that part of the ship. Here you can see their jacuzzi and deck areas. Now there is one other option just below the Yacht Club classification and that's Aurea, which comes with spa rights. This could be a good choice for those looking for an upgraded experience. This is the view from the Aurea deck and you can see the spa and jacuzzi area taken as the Virtuosa arrived under the spectacular Lisbon Harbour Bridge. Since we started reviewing the Virtuosa, we've had a lot of people come and say to us, well, if you're not happy with the main section of the ship, just go to the Yacht Club. Well, that's true, but you have to remember the Yacht Club accounts for just 5% of the Virtuosa, meaning 95% of everybody else is in the main section. By the way, MSC isn't the only cruise line dabbling with this ship within a ship concept. Celebrity has their retreat and the Norwegian Cruise Lines has their haven. Have you been on Yacht Club? Would you recommend it? Let us know in the comments section below. Right, time to come on to something I think we've avoided for too long in this video and it's a really thorny issue and that's the swimming pool area. There are two areas on the ship which are shocking and get way too packed. One we've already covered is the buffet, and then this one, the swimming pool, is an absolute howler. I think it would be fair to say it's extremely crowded by the pool side. You realize that six to 7,000 passengers means it's gonna get busy, very busy. At times, you're gonna think, good God, there's too many people here. This is the area that most people get hopping mad about. Unless you've been to a pool area that looks and feels like this, it's difficult to describe. 
Wow, that's the queue to get some fast food. Some pizzas, burgers and ice cream. Okay, there was no space on the lower deck. Let's see what we can find on the upper deck. Will we have any more luck finding somewhere to relax or space out or call our own? It was impossible to find a lounger or a place to relax. The area is just not adequate for the number of passengers. And this feeling of being absolutely rammed by the pool never lets up. It's like being in a tin of sardines night and day. If there's one single aspect of the cruise that was universally criticized, you're looking at it. We've been on other cruise lines that are equally large on mega ships, but it never, ever, ever felt as busy as it did on the Virtuosa. Meantime, if there's no space in the pool outside, you can always come inside. Would you say there's more or less space on this pool inside than there is outside? Difficult to tell. There's quite a lot of people in that pool. And several jacuzzis. We're about to enter spin cycle. We're in frothing right now. I do feel like we're inside of a washing machine. Just to say, it's 6. 58 in the morning. I'd say at least, what, what do we reckon? Three quarters of the deck chairs have already been taken, way over half. Let's call it three quarters because it's happening very fast in front of me. They've almost all gone. This is an operation and a half. All the deck chairs on the ship going out. They can't wheel them out fast enough. I feel we were at a multi-story car park for deck seating. Okay, update. 712. Absolutely everything has gone. Not a space to be found. But as with everything in life, it's all about timing. We found the best time to take a stroll, de-stress and enjoy ourselves was as the sun went down. For that moment, life felt good. The sea was calm, all was well. Make sure you do the same. Right, let's come inside for a minute, quite possibly because there's absolutely nowhere to sit outside. See what activities there are to do if you're bored or it's a rainy day and I know what you're thinking. You're just itching to know if there are those silly little MSC trinkets you could possibly be interested in. Are we up for a bit of retail therapy? Quick look up at the ceiling. What's today's theme? Flowers. And if you're extremely bored, you can go into the MSC merch store. All right, what totally unnecessary items might we be tempted by? Let's have a peruse. Is the MSC cooking apron grabbing you? How about an MSC sewing kit? You see, I've got you excited now. You want one of those? Ah, here's something you might need, an MSC diffuser back in your cabin for when you're really irate about when things aren't going right on deck and you can't get a deck chair or a sun lounger. That'll calm you down back in the cabin, surely. Don't forget the Virtuosa lighter or a Virtuosa fridge magnet. And the MSC Lego. Now come on now, do you want some MSC Birkenstock style saddles? How zippy would you look on deck with those? And then there's the archetypal rainy day activity. Bingo! Let's take a wander into the carousel lounge. During the day, it's one of the best views on the ship. But it's a bit of a shame because apart from bingo, which is about to start now, this area really doesn't get used much. And it's a fantastic area. See what I mean? Glorious view. Anyway, in the meantime, bingo is about to start. And there is a gym. Let's take a wander in. I know my wife is in here. So, one of the comments is that the gym on the MSC is a bit small for the number of guests. So, let's see what the apparatus is and how easy it is to get on. I've been told sometimes it's impossible to get in. Right now, at about 11 o'clock in the morning, it's not too bad. It's got a view out to the main swing complex.
So how is it in the gym? I think the gym in itself is very large, okay? But I think you have to look at it in proportion to the number of passengers. In proportion to the number of passengers, it's relatively small. But what we do have here is modern, it's state of the art, and the best part of the gym is every single cardio equipment has a spitting view. Absolutely spitting view. So I'll give it five stars for its position. As for other entertainment on board, there's also a large theatre, which, unusually for a cruise line, has three performances a night. But as capacity is just 1,000 in the theatre at one time, and there are over 6,000 passengers, not everyone is going to get in. Most of the shows were song and dance and Broadway musical varieties. I would rate them as okay. Not particularly groundbreaking, normal, middle-of-the-road cruise line stuff. OK, so who says there isn't any highbrow activity on board an MSC ship? We're off for a few minutes to see the opera and the ballet. I say a few minutes because we don't know how good it's going to be. Let's find out. Right, now on to activities, and the Virtuosa dedicates a huge area to this particular aspect. Okay, we're in the entertainment complex, which has got a variety of things. There is a virtual reality hollow deck, and some arcade style machines. It's got some Formula One simulators. Ah, there's a bowling alley. This is a teen hangout area. We've got a teen hangout bar. Which looks straight down to the sports court. Okay, let's take a look through the kids area, which is called the Do Re Mi Club. Yes. By the way, quick heads up, some of the machines in the arcade section are quite expensive. So if you have kids in your group, you might want to keep a tab on their account spending. Let's now move on to one of the most divisive aspects of the ship, the loud entertainment on board. This is how we covered it when we were there. So let's move on to evening entertainment. And this has been the most divisive aspect about the ship. You've got some people who say, my God, this is nothing but a noisy, boozy party ship full of drunks. And you've got the other half who said, no, I like the parties. I like the atmosphere, give more. So let's show you a typical evening and what activities are available. So you can decide for yourself whether you think you like it or dislike it. And they're promoing tonight's street party. It's our evening. Traditional cruises feel it's way too loud, in your face, nightclubby, and with pounding non stop music. Because of the layout of MSC ships, they are very open plan, with one area leading to another. There is no real way of escaping the noise. If you don't want the loud parties, you're not really going to find an easy way to avoid them. This is deck six and seven, the Galleria, which hosts most of the entertainment's bars and restaurants. And it's the main thoroughfare throughout the ship. Just about everything leads off this area. You pretty much have to go along here get from A to B on the ship, and you're going to be right in the mix of whatever entertainment is on. Most nights, there's a party, as well at various times throughout the day.
Throughout the cruise, there were also sing-along silent discos, some here in the heart of the ship, some on the pool deck. So, getting ready for the silent disco is up on deck. But here's the problem. 6,000 passengers on board, what have we got? Yet again, we've got queues. And this is a recurring theme. There are 6,000 people trying to do it at the same time. You could say that this has been a cruise of queuing. There has to come a point where you say, is it fun to queue for absolutely everything that you do on board? All MSC ships have multiple bars, clubs and pubs. I shot this footage quite early in the evening, as later on there was almost no way to get in with way too many people. Master of the Seas pub. There's also a karaoke lounge. Right at the other side of the casino is the Carousel Lounge, which is their version of a Cirque du Soleil. Tonight we're going to the Carousel Lounge. We're going to watch a Cirque du Soleil type performance. We've gone all blue and psychedelic. Well, there are cocktails and mocktails included in the price. Let's see what we're going to get for that. Hey, what do we have a choice of? So what's the choice? Rum based, vodka based and non-alcoholic. Rum based and vodka based. Okay, well I went for the rum based one. Here we are. It's in the round. Like a theatre. And we're going to watch Archimia. It was a combination of acrobatics, mime, dance and aerial performances. Well, for copyright reasons, I can only show you a snatch, but I can tell you we thoroughly enjoyed the show. I would recommend it. And bearing in mind it includes a free drink, it's a bit of a no-brainer. We'd now like to show you what fast became one of our favourite destinations on the ship, the Sky Lounge. It really is one of the few sanctuaries aboard away from the hustle and bustle. It's an adults-only area and has an elegant, upscale vibe to it, with fantastic panoramic views across to the pool area and out to sea. There's frequently a band or a pianist playing. And here's the tip for you. They have a complimentary snacks and hors d'oeuvres cabinet on offer. Remember to ask them for it. The Sky Bar is open throughout the day, right through to the end of the evening. Now let's move on to what the Virtuosa offers for the family activities out on deck. Now we did cover this fairly comprehensively in our early video, which please do look at after, but in case you missed that, here's just a brief synopsis. Bright blue sky on the upper deck of the Aqua Park an absolute kids and family mecca. You can come hurtling down that slide. There. How old am I? I'm going on the flumes. I should be hurtling down that. Right to green. Systems go. Afternoon activity, Himalaya Bridge. And it's for all age groups, there we are. Complete multi-generation families, from teenagers right up to as young as you feel. Now we've so far covered the main dining room, the buffet, there are also four speciality restaurants aboard. These are extra cost restaurants that are not included in the fair price. 
Now, we do have a separate video on that coming out very shortly. In that, we show you all four and what we think of them and whether they're worth the extra money. Now, one aspect we absolutely have to mention, because it wouldn't be a fair and balanced video if we didn't, and that is disembarkation. For us, it was an absolute nightmare. Now, I can't guarantee it was for everybody, but for us, it was. Let's see how it unfolded. Holy moly, this is the queue to get off. This queue is going a long, long way. This is going a long, long way. We've been given our departure times. So either everybody's been given the same departure time, there's a hiccup, or it's always like this at disembarkation off the ship. I'm not sure which one it is, but we could be standing in this departure queue for a very, very long time. We can't even go through that way, so we're gonna have to bypass this way. This is chaotic. I don't think I have ever seen a situation like this. It's crazy. We've been here for an hour. You've been here for an hour? We've got from the end of the left to here. I think the whole ship is just in a queue. It's the whole ship just standing in a corridor. There's no way of gathering where we're supposed to because we can't get through. It's... This is not really the way to end a cruise. Delay, I think, is an understatement. People are seething. I've been walking up and down for the last 10 minutes and everybody is hopping mad. They'd be in the queue for two, three hours and people are going to miss their connection. To say people are angry is really underplaying it. Okay, we are currently asking you to remain waiting in your meeting point areas until we Almost two hours from our supposed disembarkation time. Hope to see you again. Well, that's interesting. All the people standing in the queue, are they thinking the same thing as well? That was an absolute nightmare. Close to two hours from our supposed disembarkation time to actually getting off. Chaos carnage, zoo environment. The cruise director said to us in last night's theatre production before it started, don't worry, we know what we're doing, we can handle it. We've done this loads of times, we'll get you off timely and safely. Not the case on this occasion. Whether this happens every time, I can't say for sure. I can comment on what happened to us. This was the most chaotic disembarkation from a cruise we have ever, ever, ever had from any cruise line. It was an incredibly frustrating way to finish the cruise. Let us know if your experience was exactly the same or perhaps it was different. Let us know in the comments box below. Now, at the beginning of the video, we asked, can 6,000 passenger mega ship cruises be any fun to sail on? When we met people aboard and asked them if they were enjoying the Virtuosa, they invariably gave three different answers. The first group said they came on the Virtuosa because it was good value for money, but they knew it was going to be busy, but they had kids or grandkids, and so that this was the ship that was the best fit. Having said that, a lot of them went on to say if they weren't with young family members, they would pick a different cruise line. The second batch of answers that we invariably got was yes, they would come on Virtuosa, but only on the Yacht Club because they felt it was a sanctuary away from the rowdiness and the hustle and bustle of the main section of the ship. They wouldn't in any shape or form come in the main section, but only the Yacht Club. And the third group of people we came across said they loved the Virtuosa, loved the fact that it was pulsating, vibrant, fun, noisy, and a bit of a party ship. So at the end of the day, what do we think about the Virtuosa? Would we ever consider going aboard again? Well, there's so much that the Virtuosa is getting right. The cuisine aboard is good, the ship is modern, has good facilities, and was always spotless. And the crew, by and large, were very helpful, very obliging, and very smiling. Hello, Hello how are you? Evening. By and large, they are extremely friendly, approachable, and good-natured. I think MSC has got the training spot on. 
Some cruise lines, the staff are cold or disinterested. Not here. Oh, I could do with that drink. That looks yes. good. <laughs> Is that a pina colada? Yeah. Well. <laughs> I'd also actually like to point out the captain, and I hope I've got his name right. Jacobus Leffering, that was the name that was put up on the screen. We found him down to earth. We liked his announcements on the tannoy. It was always friendly, helpful, and courteous. But here's my hesitation. MSC has designed a megaship that is designed to have 6,000 passengers aboard. That's their job. They are there to sell the tickets and to try and fill the ship up as much as possible. And MSC run frequent promotions, meaning the ship, more often than not, will be at full capacity. And some of the comments we get back are, well, don't go in high season, just book off season. But that's a gamble I'm very reluctant to take. Just book and pray that MSC haven't sold it out. Book and pray they haven't had a rip-roaring month so I can sneak in and get a cruise at half capacity and then I'll enjoy it. Do you want to take that risk? Because a lot of the time, the Virtuosa is full. And it's a crying shame because it's a cracker of a ship. I hope you've enjoyed this. Making a video cruise review is always a tough balancing job because all of our goals are different to each other. We're all looking for a slightly different aspect out of our dream cruise. Please do drop us a comment in the box below if you think we haven't got it right or you think we've forgotten something. We'd love to hear from you. And just to keep you in the loop, we have a series of companion videos to this one. Firstly, we haven't mentioned cabins and we have a separate video coming for that. The safe in the cabins is absolutely tiny. Let me put my hand here for reference of size. Forget trying to get a laptop. You're gonna get very little in there. You need to bring some sort of lockable case. And additionally, you have USB connectivity by the side of the bed. It's built into the bedside lamp. That's clever. There you go. The lamp's on and off, and you have your USB connectivity here. One each side of the bed. Secondly, we're putting together a Ports of Call video for all the beautiful ports we went on our 14-night Mediterranean cruise, and a lot of them are absolutely gorgeous. You've got to watch your elbows. You can't stick them out in the middle of the street. Lots of hubbub and tuk-tuks reversing into each other and running you down and tooting their horns. In the meantime, we have several videos on our channel covering a variety of cruise lines and you can see them here and you can see them here and we look forward to you joining us in those. Thanks so much for joining us on the Ritzy Travel Guide.